I have with me Mukund Krishnan on the violin and Bhavyan Duvaru on the mridangam. We would first like to thank homage to Padma Bhushan Shri Mysore Vasudevacharya Facebook page for providing this wonderful opportunity to perform. Ramayanam is one of the two great epics of Indian history. Ramayanam elucidates the story of Lord Sri Rama and Devi Sita when they incarnated on earth. Lord Sri Ram is the human personification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Man Narayana. Ramayanam is not just a mere storybook or a mere story, but a book high on morals. It is a philosophy that each human must embark on in order to attain materialistic and spiritual wisdom and bliss. Ramayana is penned by Sri Valmiki and many other poets around the world. Sri Tyagaraja in one of his kritis says, Rama Katha is like nectar or the story of Ram is like nectar. Listening to Rama Katha, listening to the story of Ram is like drinking the nectar and drinking this nectar by listening to the story of Ram is equivalent to that of ruling a kingdom itself. Sri Tyagaraja in his Kriti says,
Shri Tyagaraja says that drinking this nectar of Ramakatha or listening to the story of Ramakatha has multiple benefits. For one, Dharma Gyakila Pala Restore of the fruits of dharma or righteousness. Not only that, it also provides dhairya, ananda, saukya. It provides manas dhairya, that is, it provides willpower, courage, it provides peace of mind, it provides well being, it provides saukyam, it provides anandam, it provides happiness. Apart from that, listening to Ramakatha also has the benefits of letting go of, of this samsara sagara or the burning ocean of this samsara or the world that we are bound to by karma. karma and ultimately, just by listening to Ramakatha, one gains the power to just destroy Kali, Kali Yuga's effects. Kali Such are the benefits of listening to Ramaguna, Ramakatha, of listening to Ramayanam. Hence, today's topic will be Ramajananam or the birth of Sri Rama. Srimat Ramayanam penned by Sri Valmiki will be the basis of this musical discourse along with compositions by many other composers. Valmiki is referred to as the Adikavi. The life history of Valmiki is detailed out in the Puranas. Valmiki was a hunter and it was sage Narada who provided spiritual wisdom to Sri Valmiki. One day, the divine sage Narada appears and visits sage Valmiki at his ashram or hermitage. Sage Narada wanted to impart more spiritual wisdom into Valmiki and to inform him that he must author the epic poem of Ramayana. A divine conversation ensues between the two. Sage Valmiki inquires from Sage Narada asking, Narada says, yes of course, and that is none other than 
Shri Rama himself. Sage Narada then explains the qualities of Rama, characteristics of Rama, Rama Guna, Rama's character. He also tells Valmiki of Rama Katha, of Rama's story until now and gives a brief outline of the Ramayana. Sage Valmiki was very pleased to hear this that he says Sakala Noka Muna Tusa Guru Valmiki's mouth were in the form of a shloka, were in the form of a meter. He was very surprised and he kept thinking about it. As he reached his ashram, Lord Brahma was waiting for him. Lord Brahma explains to Valmiki that he must author the epic poem of Ramayana in the same metrical form as the shloka he had composed that morning. Lord Brahma grants Valmiki the power of clairvoyance. Valmiki then begins to write the Ramayana. He composed the Ramayana in 24,000 verses. He then taught the entire Ramayana to his disciples Lava and Kusha who happened to be sons of Ram themselves. Lava and Kusha had a very beautiful and melodious voices that they used to sing Ramakatha everywhere they went and spread the word of Rama and Ramayana. They finally were invited to Ayodhya to Sri Rama's kingdom. Rama was unaware of Lava and Kusha being his sons. He just wanted to hear Ramayana because they were very famous for singing the Ramayana. Lava and Kusha then at the court of Rama began singing in their mellifluous voice. Kosalo Nam Mudita Spito Janapado Mahanem Nevishta Sarayuti Prabhu Dana Danya Mahanem Ayodhya Nam Anadarim Tatra Silo Kavishudan Maruna Mahanem Renam These shlokas are taken from the fifth chapter of Ramayana. On the banks of river Sarayu, 
was a very prosperous city named, a country in fact, named Kosala. Ayodhya was the capital city of Kosala and was built by the lord of men, Manu. Ayodhya was a huge place. It extended to 12 yojanas in length and 3 yojanas in breadth. Ayodhya was a beautiful city. It had well laid out roads and highways. The highways on either side had rows of beautiful flowers that were watered on a daily basis. Ayodhya was very strong and it had strong fortifications throughout. No enemy could easily enter Ayodhya. It had a lot of cavalry, army, elephants, horses, cattle, mules, camels, etc. It was a very prosperous city. The people were very happy, they were very secure, they were free from all tensions and they loved their king. Their king was Dasharatha. Dasharatha ruled Ayodhya just as the way Manu ruled. He followed the same principles that was laid out by Manu, the lord of men. Dasharatha was very well educated. He was well read in the Vedas, literature, philosophy, arts, science and so on. Not only that, he was a great warrior. He was a great charioteer and he was a Maharatha. He could handle so many enemies just single-handedly. Dasharatha always followed the path of righteousness and dharma. He constantly performed puja, sacrifices and he kept his subjects very happy. In riches, his riches were equivalent to that of Kubera, the lord of riches himself. Unfortunately, Dasharatha had no sons and daughters, no children. He was very worried and he was very old. He was getting old. He did not know what to do. He thought he could perform the Ashwamedha Yajna or the Putra Kameshti Yajna in order to beget children. He decides to consult his council of ministers, the priests, his wives and the sages of the kingdom. Everybody was very happy to hear this idea and gave him a green signal. Sumantra, one of the ministers of Dasharatha, tells Dasharatha that he could approach sage Rishishringa to perform the Ashwamedha Yajna. Dasharatha then goes on to invite and request sage Rishishringa to come to Ayodhya to perform the Putra Kameshti Yajna and the sacrifice and the puja. Sage Rishishringa happily agrees and begins his journey towards Ayodhya. While this was happening, Vasishta, the priest of Ayodhya, then sent out invites to all kings and queens to attend the puja and the sacrifice. All the people of the kingdom began their preparations for the grand puja, the grand sacrifice. The Ashwamedha, the horse, was then let out and Dashrata and his wives on the banks of river Kosala commenced the grand sacrifice with sage Rishishringa and Vasishta preceding it. At the time when the puja was going on in Ayodhya, which is present day Uttar Pradesh, somewhere in the heavens, the demigods assembled to Brahma and requested Brahma to provide a solution to conquer King Ravana who was getting evil by the day. Ravana had a boon that he could be killed only by a man, monkey and monkey chiefs and bears. Vishnu then appears and promises everyone that he will be born as a human on earth and will destroy Ravana. As soon as Vishnu disappeared, all the devatas also disappeared and were very happy. As the sacrifice came to an end, a celestial being arose from the fires. The celestial being had a pot of paisum or sweet milk. The celestial being then handed over the paisum to the Dasharatha and asked him to split the paisum between his wives. Dasharatha then accepts the paisum with great humility and distributes the paisum between his queens Kausalya, Sumitra and Kaikeyi. The queens then partake 
the pysum and after some time they get pregnant after six seasons passed almost after a completion of one year of the sacrifice in the 12th month chaitra shukla navamyam pune Of the babies, of the newborn babies 
of their future kings. There were poems, poets composing poems in uh, praise of Dasharatha, his queens, the children, the newborn babies. Dasharatha was also very happy. He began distributing sweets, he began distributing gifts, jewelry, and clothes to everybody. He gave charities to the priests, the sages and everyone else. Everybody was very happy. After a lapse of 11 days, the naming ceremony was performed. The preceptor Vasishta named Kausalya's son Rama, Kaikeyi's son Bharata and Sumitra's son, sons Lakshmana and Shatrugla. All the rites that were to be performed at the time of birth were duly performed. The boys were always, the babies were always together. They were, they were put to sleep together. They were awakened together. Everything, all of them were, did everything together. All the queens in the morning, early in the morning, as soon as the sun slowly begins to rise at the time of dawn, would awaken baby Rama and other princes with beautiful singing.
king of Ayodhya, the future king of Ayodhya. Rajan
is a baby after all. He doesn't he doesn't know how to walk completely. He's trying to walk. So he first he has he his his footsteps are all faltered. He goes two footsteps and then falls down again. Tumak chalat. When when he he's so chubby that when when he puts his foot down, all his cheeks, his cute tummy are all are all vibrating with that force with which he's trying to walk towards his parents. While he's walking, his beautiful anklets are making noise. He falls. He keeps falling down. He cries a bit. He tries to get up. Then the queens take pity. Oh, so sad, Rama. You're falling, Rama. Don't worry. We'll come and pick you up and help you. Then the queens and the nannies pick up Rama, and then he has support to walk. So he's very happy. As he walks, he also makes cute baby noises. Shri Tulsi Das says that there is no one equivalent to Rama. It is Rama himself who is a competition for Rama. That is how beautiful and cute is Rama. Finally, somehow. Rama and his brothers then come to their father somehow and they're very happy. The parents are all clapping very happily that Rama finally made it to King Dasharatha and Queen Kausalya. Kausalya is so happy that she's filled with maternal affection that he that she hugs baby Rama. She picks him up from the ground and she kisses him very softly on his cheeks and his forehead. Shri Tyagaraja observes that what penance would, he thinks, what penance could Kausalya and Dashrata have performed, how, what penance they could have performed that they had the opportunity to be parents to Shri Rama himself. He says, Shri Rama, Rahu Rama, Shri He says, 
तप में मीचे से don't know what penance did kausalya perform that she had the opportunity to taluku che kulamu go betu kausalya that she had the opportunity to kiss shri rama what penance did dasharatha do i am unaware of that he had the opportunity to dasharatha do shri rama वासुदेवाचार्य फेसबुक पेज for providing this wonderful opportunity i would also like to thank my gurus my friends and family for their constant support i pray that shri rama bestows us with peace health prosperity happiness and bhakti we will conclude the session with a mangal